The SpaceX military starship is real. How's this going to end? This is the biggest news of the year, coming straight from SpaceX headquarters. The Air Force is gearing up to put the military starship to the test. But here's the million dollar question. How will this remarkable development play out? And what groundbreaking implications does it hold? Join us as we reveal the thrilling mysteries of the SpaceX military starship. It's not a myth anymore, and trust me, you're not ready for it. Let's take a step back to 2020 for this starship news. Back then, the U.S. Transportation Command engaged in discussions with SpaceX about the remarkable potential of using Starship to transport up to a staggering 100 tons of cargo to any point on Earth in less than an hour. This concept sparked the Pentagon's interest, leading to the announcement of the Rocket Cargo Program in 2021, aimed at exploring the feasibility of such capabilities. Fast forward a year, and SpaceX X secured a hefty $102 million contract to demonstrate its prowess in transporting military cargo and humanitarian aid globally using Starship. However, following this announcement, there was a noticeable silence, with scarcely any updates about the program's progress. Recently, the silence was broken and fresh information has come to light, courtesy of the C4 ISR Net portal. It turns out that the rocket cargo program is currently in a data gathering phase. All the valuable data that SpaceX is accumulating from its Starship flights starting with the first one, is being shared with the Air Force. By 2024, after accumulating sufficient data, the Air Force plans to use a mock-up of Starship's upper stage in 2025 to test the rapid loading and unloading of cargo. This mock-up is reportedly close to completion, although no public images have surfaced yet. The real LIMAS test for this ambitious initiative is set for 2026 when SpaceX will demonstrate its ability to swiftly launch rockets and transport substantial amounts of cargo to and from orbit. A crucial aspect of these tests will be ensuring that the cargo, which might not have originally been designed for space conditions, can be safely transported. One intriguing example mentioned by the Air Force is none other than a Humvee. This development raises important questions. Should Starship be employed for military purposes or should its use be limited to scientific and civilian payloads? The potential for Starship to become a mobility platform for the U.S. military is indeed an exciting prospect, as stated by Gary Henry, Senior Advisor for National Security Space Solutions at SpaceX. The experience gained from launching Starlink satellites on Starship and its development for NASA's Artemis program is expected to provide valuable insights for the U.S. military in terms of cargo delivery and other missions. Gary Henry, who previously served with Boeing and the US Air Force, is collaborating with the Air Force Research Laboratory on exploring concepts for using rockets for point-to-point -point cargo delivery, all under a substantial $102 million five-year contract awarded in 2020. While other space companies have signed agreements with the US Transportation Command to explore rocket cargo concepts SpaceX stands out with its significant contract win. Greg Spangers, Program Manager for Rocket Cargo at AFRL, envisions a future where it might be more cost-effective to transport cargo via rocket than by traditional transport aircraft, especially in national security or humanitarian crises. A launch vehicle could take off from, say, Cape Canaveral and either land on a remote field to deliver cargo or airdrop it. To make this program viable, a high launch rate and systems capable of carrying a substantial payload upon re-entry are key factors. Regarding Starship, SpaceX is forecasting a remarkable drop in mass to orbit costs, potentially from $2,000 per kilogram to as low as $200 per kilogram or even lower if Elon Musk's vision becomes reality. The cost factor is expected to be a compelling driver and it could become a reality quite soon. Colonel James Horn, Deputy Director of Operations at U.S. Space Systems Command points out the compelling use cases for rocket cargo in terms of shipping cargo worldwide. The vast distances in areas like the Indo-Pacific Command area of operations, with extensive ocean expanses and island chains, present unique mobility challenges that rocket cargo could potentially address. The potential applications extend to on-orbit infrastructure as well. Starship's lunar landing architecture initially intended for NASA's moon program, 
could provide on-orbit infrastructure for logistics and refueling. This infrastructure could be leveraged for national security purposes, facilitating dynamic space operations and maneuvering without regret, terms used by U.S. Space Command to describe its vision for military space operations. These operations include the ability to maneuver satellites, move payloads across different orbits, and even refuel satellites. Currently, satellites lack sufficient fuel for maneuvering and were not designed for refueling, which complicates the nation's ability to compete in space with other powers. Overall, this development opens up exciting possibilities, raising questions about the future role of Starship and its potential as a game changer in military and civilian logistics. The coming years promise to be a fascinating journey as this innovative program continues to unfold and evolve. Moving on, the past few weeks have been a roller coaster of excitement ever since the launch of the second orbital stack. And guess what? The momentum is showing no signs of slowing down. SpaceX officially revealed that the next orbital stack in line is Booster 10 and Ship 28. After months of intense work, Booster 10 has already rolled out from the Mega Bay. This involved the installation of a whopping 33 Raptor V2 engines and the careful mounting of the hot staging ring. Currently, this prototype is stationed at the Rocket Garden, eagerly awaiting the green light at the launch site. Meanwhile, Ship 28 is gearing up for its own rollout. The self-propelled modular transporters required for its move have already entered the high bay. The testing campaign for this prototype is expected to follow the standard procedure, starting with a spin prime test to ensure that all Raptor turbo pumps are functioning like clockwork. A few days later, we'll likely be treated to one of our favorite spectacles, a six-engine static fire. In my humble opinion, all Ship 28 testing will probably wrap up before the year's end, leaving it ready and waiting for Booster 10. But here's the million dollar question. How quickly can SpaceX complete the upgrades to the orbital tank farm to restart testing at the orbital launch table? Thanks to some stunning shots captured by Redline Ely, we can witness the hive of activity at the launch site. Crews are hard at work on both the oxygen and methane sides of the tank farm likely preparing to connect the new tanks recently placed on their pedestals. What's more, a protective wall is being erected behind these tanks to shield them from debris during launches. However, the exact purpose of each tank remains a bit of a puzzle. As we inch closer to the launch tower, we encounter the gears and wheels of the water deflector. What's intriguing is that a nearby parking lot has been dismantled and workers can be seen digging channels for what appears to be some piping. This has sparked another mystery. What could it possibly be for? Well, a second tank farm would be fascinating. The available space seems somewhat limited for so many tanks. A more plausible explanation could involve the construction of a water storage or pump system. This might eliminate the need for constant water deliveries for the deflector system. Given its close proximity to the existing setup, it seems like a logical step. But what's your take on it? Dare I say it, are we about to witness the arrival of a water tower at Starbase? The excitement continues to build? Now, let's shift our gaze to the bustling build site, where progress is happening on multiple fronts simultaneously. At the second mega bay, almost half of all the glass panels have already found their places. While this bay patiently awaits the necessary hardware for Starship construction, SpaceX isn't in any hurry to whip up new prototypes, thanks to the surplus they have. Over at the Star Factory, massive strides are being made in one of the last phases of this colossal building project. The foundations are already partially laid and the assembly of the first roof sections has begun. Just next to the Star Factory, there's an unmistakable expansion of the residential area for SpaceX employees. Houses are sprouting up like mushrooms and in places where a house can't fit, portable barracks are being put to good use. Before we know it, SpaceX might end up owning a whole small town, and they seem to need it. On the opposite side of the bays lies the Sanchez site, a pivotal part of SpaceX's operations at Starbase. At the Rocket Garden, which is sadly no longer accessible to the public, Ship 26 has recently found its new home, with the announcement that Ship 28 is next in line for an orbital mission. The future doesn't appear promising for Ship 26, likely following the same fate as Ship 27, which was dismantled and eventually scrapped. Further back at Sanchez, 
Square areas are being prepped for concrete filling. This is likely groundwork for assembling and storing segments for a new launch tower, though the exact location of Oli 3 remains a well-kept secret. Now, let's make our way to a location we haven't checked out in a while, but thanks to our trusty photographer, John, we've got some fantastic shots. It's time to talk about Massey's. Beginning in December, the Edoma test tank met its end. This tank featured a new dome design that SpaceX intends to incorporate into future prototypes. However, after just one cryogenic test, it was sliced in half, suggesting that the design might still need some fine-tuning. Typically, we'd expect a test to destruction if the design were closer to being finalized. Next up, the nose cone jail, designed to mimic maximum aerodynamic pressure or max Q. But this time, instead of a nose cone, Test Tank S24.2 took its place. This tank features both a new dome design and a payload bay, potentially undergoing tests to evaluate Starship's readiness for Starlink deployment. While the exact timeline remains unclear, our pictures suggest that S24.2 likely underwent a test of failure, indicated by a bend near the payload bay door area. Fingers crossed that this was the intended outcome. Last but not least, we have the B7.1 test tank, which underwent cryogenic testing back in 2022 and has remained untouched ever since. Maybe they've grown a bit sentimental about this one. Toward the back of the test site, SpaceX has set up what seems to be a concrete mixing facility. They likely need a substantial amount of concrete to stabilize the entire Massey site. Nearby, next to the previously installed subcoolers, there's now an array of high-pressure tanks and a concrete base. While it's still speculative, the proximity of this base to the subcoolers might suggest that we'll see some form of tanks here intended for storing propellants like oxygen or methane. This area is undoubtedly one to keep an eye on in the coming months. It promises to be interesting. So there you have it, the unfolding story of the military starship, a concept that could revolutionize cargo delivery and logistics. What are your thoughts on this bold endeavor? Do you believe that Starship should be utilized for military purposes, or do you think its role should be primarily limited to scientific and civilian missions? Share your thoughts and join the conversation about the future of space technology. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. Also, if you're a fan of all things technology, be sure to check out this other video we've got lined up for you. It's packed with all the latest news, tips and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve.